This episode has been brought to you by Fornos Law Firm, devoted to optimizing your legal results at fornoslaw.com. Welcome to Push Rim Life After Injury Podcast for November 2nd, 2012, episode 19. Special guest, Robert Rohan. What's up, guys? Hey, hey, what's up, Bobby? Thanks for having me back. Anytime, Bobby. I'm, I'm Ray Pizarro. I'm Boris Del Cid. Richard Bell. Well, we want to thank our audience once again for being part of our discussion today. We, we gladly brought back our good friend of ours that couldn't be, you know, too far from us and, <laughs> and, and finally made it back in studio, yeah, Bobby. Um, thanks for having me back. Oh, no, no worries, man. Uh, it's always a pleasure. The original man with the cape. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to hear. Yeah. The, the original. The OG. <laughs> like the original recipe. That's right. So how's life been going, Bobby? How's life been treating you? Any any news? Uh... Uh, I mean, I can't complain. Um, uh, I think uh, you guys know that I started, what, about eight months ago um, working over at uh, Rancho Los Amigos. How's that going? It's way beyond... Excellent. I mean, I can't believe the the job that I have and uh, the opportunity that was just kind of passed down to me to be a supervisor there for their program that um, Rancho has called No Barriers. Okay. And it's a peer mentoring program slash life coaching program. Beautiful. And it's, you know, um, to oversee the program and help out and make the program better. And, uh, and you know, it was just great that um, my two bosses, Bobby and Amy, that they came to me and offered me and, you know, seek me out, you know, from all the work that I've done over the years that, you know, with the nonprofits um, of Wings and Rouse Riders and, you know, and saw what I can give to the program. It just, it just blows my mind. And You're definitely qualified. <laughs> so, yeah. well, you know, it's so funny when I started doing uh, support groups and peer mentoring 20 years ago, you know, I'd be, you know, volunteering my time and like, God, there should be like money in this somehow. And, you know, but a hospital is never going to pay you. They, you know, they can't bill for that. I don't have a credential from a college. So, you know, I, you know, I just played my cards and did what was in my heart to do these support groups. I, you know, at first at 17, when I was doing support groups or in, you know, they were wheeling me into it. I was like, nah, nah, nah that's not for me, dude. <laughs> not sit around in a circle and cry about my problems. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I started learning what really a support group is about. It's, it's not about, you know, you get those those people there are going to complain, but um, you get to meet a lot of great people out there, and you get to um, give your two cents and learn about other people's um, what they they've overcome, and so it, it's more of a learning experience than anything. Absolutely, so. yeah. I, I was like you uh, when I got out. I wanted nothing to do with a support group because I was always thinking of. I had a bad experience. I was forced to go to anger yeah. management. I thought it would be like the same kind of thing. <laughs> but uh no, it was actually totally cool and now I enjoy going. Yeah, I, I it's a it's a I don't know if you say lost art, but you know, just people think they're not you know, they're too cool for it, you know, and it's I mean if we all got together and sat in a circle of ten, twenty, you know, we can learn a lot from each other. And that's Absolutely. what it's for. And no and to know you're you're not alone. You know, we're all dealing with it. No matter, you know, we all have to, you know, put our shoes on the same way. So, and it's not very easy to put on our shoes. And it's just nice to know that you're not alone. And I think, you know, by us going there and showing the newbies and some of the people that are like, dang, I sat in bed for five years and I could have been doing what you guys are doing. I mean, that's what it's there for. So, so it's nice to know that, you know, um, a place like Rancho, you know, has a great program like that and uh that we're doing support groups and peer mentoring to the to the patients and outpatients it's it's amazing so wow. now bobby we we know that you know that's not enough for you so <laughs> tell us about any other groups that you've joined uh um i know you've joined a few groups and you're in charge of some gobble club can you tell us about that and well actually um you know to do something that, totally, you know, off the wall and, um, it, running a support group, you have to, you have to be a good speaker, think off your toes sometimes. And so a friend of mine, Stefan Freeman said, you know, I'm doing this thing called Toastmasters. Have you ever heard of it? No. And it's a club that you can go to just like anything and, um, and to become a better speaker. And I was like, all right, I'll check it out. And, 
you know, I found one like literally less than a mile from my house and showed up one night and saw the meeting and just like, maybe I'll join and six months later, get a couple of speeches in and get out of here, you know? <laughs> and so, and it was totally the opposite. I, I, you know, got involved and did my first speech and scared to death and shaking. And, you know, I had my iPad out and reading word from word my speech. And then, you know, now I, I write my speech the night before. And I'm like, um, I'm, yeah, it's been now, I'm almost two years into, uh, a Toastmasters. Um, I have, it's called, uh, your CC. So I already finished one of my uh, manuals, which is 10 speeches. Mm. Um, I've entered a speech contest and made it to the third round. So, and I probably would have made it to the fourth round, but I just went over seven seconds on my speech. Was that challenging, wow. like getting in front of people and talking? Like with their first day, do you remember like the first time you went up and tried um, to talk? The first or? day, you know, my first speech, yeah, it was, it was a little nerve wracking, mm -hmm. but now, I mean, and I, what I need to do is start adventuring, adventuring out to other clubs to see, you know, uh, not familiar things. faces. Oh, not okay. how they do it. I mean, every club runs it a little bit different, but it's more about getting up there. Like I can throw a speech to you guys all day and talk to you guys all day. I know you guys, you know, but when I have four strangers, it's, it's, you know, a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. Right. So I want to adventure out and do that. So you must um, be shy like me. Yeah. <laughs> so, and so, I mean, I want to, I want to just, and, and it's leading to other things. It's, um, it's led to one of our, um, our members in Toastmasters. He heard about, uh, uh, the Special Olympics of, um, Orange County. They have a bunch of athletes that go out and they, they have to talk about themselves and do a speech in a way to Knights of Columbus and, um, clubs like that that will raise money and give out and they need money to, participate i mean you can be a special Olymp olympic athlete from nine years old to 101 so mm -hmm. so all their life they're in special olympics and competing and playing softball and hockey and golf and swimming gymnastics and they're doing this year round. so they need to raise a lot of money so they go out and they do these speeches well you know their speech level was not up to par so they thought let's start uh, uh toastmasters and they couldn't call it Toastmasters just because they're a nonprofit themselves. So mm -hmm. they, we helped them start a gavel club. And once a month on Saturday, we go and, and they, we, um, conduct a regular Toastmasters and critique their speeches. They come in with speeches and a lot of it is about themselves. But now they're, we're almost, almost into a year of this. And now they're giving speeches of different topics, not about Special Olympics, not about themselves, but you know, wow. just like it, you know, and they're, they're excelling so much. I can't believe it. That was the question I was going to ask was, um, how do you come up with a speech topic or how do they do that? I mean, literally when I'm in, um, for me to come up with a topic, uh, I, I'm sitting in, uh, listening to others and I just hear like a subject and I just write down like, Oh, I could talk about that. Oh, I can talk about that. I can make a speech off that. And, you know, I've gotten really creative. I've done a lot of sports, of you know, of course. I've done one on fantasy football once. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I mean, it was like, okay, I play fantasy. And the topic of the night was football, so I did a speech on fantasy football. I and did one thank on you. And thank you, by the way, for getting us hooked on that stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. So Giving you no you. life. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I did one on um, NASCAR one time, the Tour de France. Oh. Um, just uh, last week I did one um, on – trying to quit tobacco so chew, i use the chew tobacco and i'm like i'm gonna stop tonight and it was i'm doing a humorous book right now so i have to make it funny so i made it funny about the first time i ever chewed tobacco and went green and then brought it to now it's so hard to quit and i'm shaking and all this and i had people cracking up and mm -hmm. i said so whoever wants to take this you know can for my dying you know hands do so and somebody grabbed it out of my hands and i haven't two cents so you know because wow. i kind of made a commitment in front of them so so i did a speech on that I, you know so i've done and then of course just being in a chair you can come up with speeches all day oh, yeah. long yeah oh, yeah so, that's easy yeah very good so the gobble club i think right, gavel didn't gobble like the gavel yeah gavel. <laughs> don't you didn't you hear about another uh Thing that he joined or something or well, it was Toastmasters. Oh, it was spoke, Toastmasters. He spoke, he started he spoke already. a little okay. bit about yeah. that, and then the gavel also, club. And then also through that, um, 
and I heard we're going to start getting paid, but um, I also got hooked up with, uh, it's a nonprofit organization called Bear, mm-hmm. Bear the Bully. And it's a bully program, oh, yeah. and, and there's a bad problem in our schools of people getting bullied, mm-hmm. you know, not only to each other, but also, you know, through the Internet and Facebook. And, yeah. you know, kids are losing their lives, and they don't have to. Goodness. So one of our gals, she's a, a lawyer and Toastmasters, and she started a nonprofit for a bully awareness. Now, I mean, I think we all, you know, through sports, and I was popular in, you know, elementary and junior high, you know, I mean, I wanted to be around the cool kids, and I probably did a my little share of bullying, especially to my brother. And um, <laughs> so I kind of brought it into, you know, like uh, my speech is 18 minutes long, and I brought it into, you know, you know, I did my my share of, you know, picking on people and stuff like that into my brother. But then now I'm in a chair, and as you look at me and you see this cool chair and you see this cool person and talking to you. You know, would you bully me on the playground? You know, it feels bad enough having an injury. You know, you already feel crappy about yourself. And now if you see a kid who has, is slow or has a disability on the playground, you're going to go pick on him when he already feels crappy about himself. And you don't know. And he could be on the you. edge too, yeah, right? And I'm telling this to the kids. Like, why would you do that? I already feel crappy about mm-hmm. myself. You know how hard it is to live with a disability? And, and you can see mine, but when you see somebody that's kind of shy or you, and so I'm really just putting it into the face. Why are you going to do this? Why are you going to go pick on somebody like that? It's you true. don't know what his inside problems are. That's true. So that, and so I've gotten involved with that too. Now, how about politics? I, I hear there might be politics in your future. <laughs> I don't, I got this, you know, I'm trying to uh, join the advisory board of Fountain Valley, um, or, it's not, the um, nominations come up in January, and they've already said you're 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 in line. We're going to put you on the advisory board. So I got four years of uh, start kissing some people's butts, butts, I guess. And <laughs> no, I you think know, you probably and, get... and see if I can get on city council. It's something different. It's you know I've done everything with in my life has to deal with my disability. Um, it you know helping out with sports wheelchair sports camps and and playing rugby and. Doing wings, which is nonprofit for some, you know, spinal cord injury and Rouse Riders. And, you know, and I, and once I started Toastmasters, nobody's in a chair there. You know, very few Toastmasters out there are in chairs. There's a few out there. I've seen them, but you know, it's, it has nothing to do with a disability. I can talk about, you know, make a speech up with my disability, but it just fun, kind of felt like, you know, and I'm not trying to seek out doing something that nobody's in a chair, but it just turning out like, when people go, what am I going to do now that I'm in a chair? It's like, what can't you do? And then I discovered this Toastmaster. I discovered this, you know, getting into, you know, um, politics in your community. I, all I want to do is a small. I want to make my community better. And what better way to get on the city council and do some, something exciting and fun? Yeah, you can be in the disabilities issue. I mean, not just that, but I'm saying is advocate for um, those, you know, Disabled people in your community. Yeah, disabled or not. You yeah, know. spinal cord injury. We do need a voice out there. So. <laughs> we do, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't know where I would take it, but, you know, just, I mean, after 24 years in a chair, it's like, let's take it somewhere. <laughs> do, do it right, take notes, and then tell us how to do it, and we'll do it in our community. <laughs> there you go. I think, I think, um, uh, Ray here. No, I know could, Boris. Could do very good here in, um, in his community when we roll around. You've rolled with us. You've oh, seen yeah. the pots and I mean I went across that street. That was that was yeah, pretty, pretty hairy. <laughs> you know. I think every community could use somebody like us to help, you know, make stuff easier mm-hmm. for and us. And not be afraid to be proactive. Yeah. You know, you gotta speak up. Because if you look at it and turn a blind eye, maybe the guy behind you could could sum And, could and you never know. I mean, um my community has, you know, for um disability awareness month in of October. They gave away, um, they give away awards to businesses that are disabled friendly. You have to nominate them. And this year I nominated two people and they both got it. Beautiful. Nice. You know, and it's just, you're learning about who's going to take care of you out there. That's another thing. You know, we share, um, the month of October with, uh, other, um, awareness issues, uh, such as breast cancer and, um, and, you know, I like to, to, to say that, uh, I did not hear anything about, um, disabled 
Yeah, you know, unless you were on, uh, you know, ChristopherReeves.com or something like we that. Know, yeah. We know that, that, that it is, right. but the public um, uh, does not. Yeah, and so. as, as well as I think it's Physical Therapy Awareness Month. That, you it's, know, it's, it's all kinds of yeah, awareness. We get, yeah, and Cancer Awareness Month. Yeah, and all, yeah, yeah. It, it's, yeah, we get lost, unfortunately. Yeah. All right. Well, Richard, got something to ask? <laughs> so, so Bobby, um, since, since Richards is over here, uh, playing I'm, with his cord I'm over here. <laughs> got stuck. No, I was going to tell you how, how good does it feel now that you don't have to do all that, um, uh, driving and, and running yourself ragged like you used to before? Is it better to just have knowing you don't have to really? You know, drive so far and so <laughs> my long. car is loving it. <laughs> oh, I bet yeah. it is. My car every day. It's like, we're, hey, how come we're not driving so much? But yeah, it's, it's nice. I so mean, how, how many miles a month do you think you were averaging back when you were busy as oh, you were? Geez. Can you, can you put a kind of ballpark figure on there? It's like at least a grand, a thousand miles. Oh um, my God. Dude, I, yeah. I, I, I haven't, I noticed your shirt now. You got. You got Ralph Riders and Pushrim. Yeah, I got it all. And, and what's wings. the other one? Wings? wings yeah. <sighs> my this goodness. This is my old school shirt. Like your wow. promo. This is like the yeah. original, isn't this? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's vintage Pushrim Yeah, right that there. is. I, this is the first Pushrim shirt out there. That's, yeah, that's little, pretty cool. Got three big ones. Yeah. But you got the most the most awesome one right on the, the, front, the yeah. big one. Yeah. yeah. They're all awesome. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, yeah. we're, um, uh, to our listeners out there, we are working on a solution with the t-shirts so i get your emails and uh eventually we'll have something we're working on it so yeah just know that hey are you gonna do any more sports eventually you know i mean i want to if if there was an easier way to play quad rugby out there right now the two teams i can go play are like on sundays and you know sundays i call it church day which yeah, I was watching football slash <laughs> football day <laughs> as well as yeah, fantasy. You know, and it's, straight. yeah, I get my and it's, you know, my wife and I, I mean, it, it, throughout the week, you know, don't get to see a lot except, you know, late at night when right. we, she gets home at seven. I get home at six, you know, half the time. And so, you know, on Saturday, it's there's always something if I'm not doing the gavel club or something else or doing an errand because you can't do it during the week now that I, you know, I'm not I don't have as much free time. So. You know, Saturday's that. So Sundays, we, we've always just said it to ourselves. That's family day. And so to go play sports on Sunday, it's, it's too hard. You know, if, right. they, if we find out something, you know, easier, I would do it. And, um, and something easier on my body. I mean, after playing quad rugby for 20 years, it's, <laughs> you yeah. know, I can feel it in my hands. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm having a tough time. It, it's so funny when the, when the, they want, they saw me starting to push a chair. They're like, oh, you're going to screw up your shoulders. And it's like, I know, I know, but. To this day, no shoulder you know, pain, but zero, your hands are, but my hands, hands my wrists, jacked. they're just like, oh, tore up. You know, it just, yeah. are the arthritis. And I mean, I'm like, you guys need to start doing a study on that, not the shoulders. I mean, I know everybody's going to have shoulder problems, but, and eventually it might, I know I'm a little bit slower, but it's just really, it's in my hands, my knuckles. Yeah. yeah like bone, de- bone density tests and stuff like that. I don't know if it's a bone density or just. You know, whatever test they would do for arthritis or something like that. Simple x-ray, which it would yeah. show. Oh, I'm loss sure. Loss of, yeah, uh, of, of space in the joints and stuff. Yeah, and, and it just, it just like, oh. Yeah. Morning it's, stiffness and things like that. But, yeah. Uh, and, and besides sports then, you just, uh, now have settled into your work dedicated to right. that. Right. And I, I got to figure out a way to get back to the gym. And, and I was going to ask you that. How is, have you been to Santa Ana? No, I haven't. No, no. Uh, don't they have a great gym over at Rancho? They do. They yeah. have our wellness gym. There you go. And you can't be working and working out. Yeah. That's the, yeah, problem, it's... you know, and, and I, you know, maybe beforehand I can get in there, but you know what? It, it's such a great program and not to say like, I, I don't want to take it away from, somebody else using the machine, you know, and there's people waiting and we do only 20 minutes. We're luckily at the, you know, you guys know how long I like to get on the hand bike. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, you know, so I kind of just, you know, when I get to work, I want to get in work mode and I just haven't been able to do both to figure out, you know, in my mind that go, okay, I'm going to go work out and then work and then, or vice versa work and then go work out because we're open till six now, twice a week. Do we have, time for a brief description of what his day is like 
Definitely, yeah. We're, we're Go ahead, good. tell us. Yeah, we've ruined my day. <laughs> what? What? Well, yeah, I work. What do you do We're, with these individuals at the hospital? Well, I'm because I'm the supervisor for um for the program, and we have mentors uh, for spinal cord, stroke, and uh, brain injury. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm just making sure our staff are where they're supposed to be, making sure their your you know their schedule for the week is set up. Mm -hmm. Some of the therapists will request a, a mentor on the third, second, first floor. I got to make sure they get covered. Um, I got to make sure that everybody's up to date on, you know, their training. Um, a PT can, you know, request somebody and say, oh, you know, make sure you can get, you know, you know, Joe to come in. And I got to make sure that his training is up to par. Um, so I'm doing that. I'm doing some of the scheduling and um, and just, you know. Manny, you know, help and supervise it, the, the program. So, and I help out with the support group that we have, um, at Rancho every Tuesday from 12 to 1, mm -hmm. um, in our, out, um, our 900 building, which is our outpatient building. Um, I help out with some of our classes that we do on the third floor, um, which is our, um, starting out classes, our educational series. So, so uh, those new you guys watching, that's Rancho Los Amigos uh, Rehabilitation Hospital in Downey, California. Yeah. yeah, that's where I went. Yeah, that's where and I now, met Richard. More or less, mm -hmm. how many people are under your supervision? More or less, uh, twenty-five. Twenty-five. Twenty to twenty-five. Wow, quite that's a responsibility. Awesome. But, yeah, but you know, it's it's some good. days are you know mm -hmm. pretty easy days. Some days are like, where am I going? You know, especially at the end of the month, I. You know, everybody turns in their time card. I got to get everybody's time card. Oh, I have man. to, I have to make sure it matches up that nobody's putting down something that they shouldn't, mm -hmm. I, you know, review their schedule and then I have to sign off on it and then take it over to another department. So, That's right. You know, wow. All over the place. For all, That's all you guys amazing. listening and, and, uh, and watching our show, uh, Bobby is also our, uh, our ambassador for Push Room. We, uh, Thank you. You know, he's a guy that's uh, out there, you know, promoting and, and uh, not not so much, but doing outreach, you yeah, know, community let, outreach, community stuff, outreach yeah. and letting people know that we're out there as another source of um, right. Just of networking and, and connecting with end users that get hurt. So, yeah. you know, this guy is just a model to follow after. And, and man with a cape, man, I'm telling you. Pro proper, dis proper description. I, 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 he does it all. If we have a quick second, but yeah. I wanted to give you guys a little bit surprised, but you know that my parents are, uh, Disabled Dealer Magazine. Yes. Correct. And, uh, you can find them on, uh, DisabledDealerMagazine.com where they have, you know, the, the, the articles and the, the advertising of, you know, you, new and used vehicles as well as equipment and special advertising that you can find out a lot of good information out there. But, uh, for the month of December, um, my mom has asked that you guys are going to be on the cover and the cover story. Yeah. Wow. So that's um, awesome. Wow. Thank you. Well, we're making, uh, making, uh, your website the website of the date. We usually feature one and, uh, um, I'm glad you mentioned Disabled it. Dealer Magazine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's Come great. And and, what, what and, do you get in Disabled, uh, Dealer, uh, well, Magazine? They have, what they can have you a get? Nice, uh, nice web app, actually. It's it's really nice. It looks like a magazine. It's today. yeah, it is the magazine. It's like better than some of those yeah. magazine apps out there. So anything right. that you want to buy with you know related to disability, uh, I mean, uh, it has. I mean, people think it's an auto trader, but you know, really, my mom's brought a lot of good writers on board of right. helping her out and writing some great articles. Right. Yeah. Um. You know, my mom. You know, she's just you know, she's really good about finding those special interest stories out there. So. You know, she usually has a great, you know, her cover stories are just the best. And as well, she has some um, people with, uh, you know, somebody who is a caregiver mm -hmm. and helping them out and uh, writing good articles about caregivers and how to find them and stuff like that. So Cool. Awesome. So, Bobby, uh, people could look. Where can they go to check out, like, uh, more info on New Barriers? Just go to Rancho Los no, uh, no barriers. No barriers. org. Okay. And you can find out the information on there. As well as you can always find me on Twitter at Robert Rohan. There you go. That's a good way of getting in contact with Bobby directly. Um, so Richard, where can and, you uh, get us? Well, you can find us on our YouTube channel at Club YouTube. Or I'm sorry, Club Push Room. One word, Club Push Room. And um, also, I wanted to say, um, do your civic duty. Get out there to vote on the six. Rock, 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 rock the, vote. the vote. Study the issues and make mm -hmm. sure you do your duty. Yeah. 
That's right. Exactly. And also you can find us on our social media, pushroom.com. And also on iTunes. Uh, check us out, download us into your uh, mobile device, and take us on the go. Uh, also our Podbean directories. Um, <laughs> So I'd like to thank once again Bobby for being here. And if any if anyone out there wants to get in contact with us and maybe sponsor an episode, uh, you could reach us at info at pushrim dot com, and uh, you know connect with us. Yeah, Anything yeah, we a lot could of good do. Stuff, guys out there. Thanks, yeah. Bobby, for coming. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Rich, Boris. It's been been fun once again. Right. Um, so we'll catch you guys on our next episode. Yep. All right. Peace All right. out. Peace, guys. Bye. Bye.